Hello and welcome back to another guide for Lamplighters League. My name is Saiken and today we're going for another team build guide. I'm calling this team damage overload as it kind of represents one tank and two dedicated damage dealers. In this particular iteration we're going to go in with Fadir, Gianni and uh, Purnima but you can very much also play that with any other bruiser slash tank uh, such as Ingrid uh, or uh, even uh, another bruiser. Judith for instance comes to mind. You can exchange both of the damage dealers for uh, any of the damage dealers that you could think of. Eddie comes uh, uh, to mind. Uh, that uh, that would be a great option or Isaac. Uh, essentially the core idea behind the team is that the tank uh, keeps the quote-unquote aggro and attention of the enemies and that there will be a lot of damage overload to essentially compensate for a narrow set of crowd control as in enemies die faster than uh, they can respawn and we're going to see just how that particular team here is uh, going to have a loadout. So the three that I'm uh, running would be Fadir as uh, the tank. He is reasonably fast uh, thanks to the speed garments. He is running the Viridides amulet to give him AP back himself. He's running extra ammo with the ammunition 2 talisman and a nice set of consumables plus a few defensive abilities. Really his core idea is to go in as fast and as hard as possible and stay alive, keep all of the enemies on him and boy oh boy he's going to do that plus some damage on top of it. We're going to have Jianyi who is uh, going to be the main melee DPS, very very mobile, comes in at 9 uh, speed, is kind of an off tank with enough armor is running the adamantine lining today with 50% re uh, reduction to all status uh, effects, um, is running the skirmisher talisman which allows him to deal more damage, crit and speed and he's this time running the trauma battery which gives him an additional chance for melee AP. This plus the passive effect uh, from the allies plus his own skill allows him to easily get to 5 or 6 AP and with that he will shred through the enemies. I will run him as the buffer for the team on top of it. The herald buff is essentially for free. His own buff uh, center is not for free but will have a good chance to recover um, action points as well because he's also running the conjunction as an additional card so there's a good chance that he always gains a um, ability uh, an action point once he is using a buff and the third one is going to be uh, Purnima who is going to just stay back and snipe she is running the assassin's talisman for maximum crit damage uh, vitality gear for high stress and high hit points if needed and she's going to use the ballistic calculation device so that after reload she really hits hard and fast. Um, she will have a bit of a support uh, with uh, the um, snake, the, the serpent for some extra AP and Fedir with his um, ability to mark targets that are going to attack him uh, will also help her quite a bit. Uh, he's using the Avenger in order to uh, to do that. Anyone who attacks the agent becomes marked. That will set up the pace for Purnima, who's then benefiting from that by essentially unleashing her kill shot against marked targets. And that's really the idea. Let's see how well the team is performing in an endgame mission. All right, we start into a combat uh, with uh, the damage overload team and we got ambushed by a team of assassins. A couple of uh, um, uh, Anubises are attacking us from here, more assassins and even reinforcements coming in. So we're looking at 10 uh, people that were fighting. We're in the middle of everything. So perfect uh, opportunity to introduce just how this team is going to interact. Let's start with Fenrir, um, who is going to take the first of the assassins. And you can see there is quite a sizable 
um, amount of crowd control that he could issue with it, basically throwing the assassin into that is how it's done. their other friends, knocking all of them down and mainly gaining rage. So that was the important part. We're also using the Herald we in order to buff win. ourselves. You can see extra AP for almost everyone and a speed increase for Fenrir. So, Fenrir himself uh, now needs uh, to uh, be able to um, tank most of uh, the opponents. And you can see those uh, opponents over there are already um, taken care of. So, we're moving further with him. Uh, knocking another one of uh, the opponents down before then uh, starting to provoke uh, all three I of exactly uh, these guys. I'm so the upper uh, section here is completely provoked by Fenrir and you can see with a few uh, um, uh, abilities used he has not only taken three here but also uh, three down here. Uh, leaving very little of the 10 enemies to actually deal with. Plus, he currently has a 50% damage reduction. That brings us to Jianyi, uh, who I talked about Here needs flow in order to work. Uh, so what we're going to do is buffing ourselves. The conjunction gives us a fantastic, um, a fantastic um, AP back. So we're AP neutral, and we're now required to actually start up and picking up more stacks of flow. The easiest way to do that is uh, to start with lightning shift and you can see uh, there are multiple ways or multiple uh, enemies that we could start doing that with. Almost had me. There is another two lightning uh, flow that we would get and now um, we're starting with Gianni's uh, actual uh, unloading. Is that all you got? It's for 80. Furor gives him another AP. It's for 91. Furor gives him yet another AP. And uh, these guys are currently provoked. I'll make this quick. So Good, we're getting yet another AP. Followed by another hit. And. You can see we have uh, single-handedly almost killed uh, two of them, taken them out before they could even do anything. Now we don't have any marked uh, targets yet, which uh, kind of tells me we might want uh, to start dealing general uh, damage to as many of uh, the enemies as possible. One way of doing that is using our trick shot ability, so that would be one uh, trick shot that we could think of. Uh, think of. Uh, potentially not a bad one, uh, simply because it would take one of these guys out and forces the ignition uh, of the mummy over there. Uh, so, since no one is uh, currently marked, we are going to make sure that our backline doesn't suffer the same uh, fate. Uh, this um, skeleton here looks awkwardly like it would want uh, to go for us. Targets. So we're just uh, going to make ourselves invisible, effectively allowing no opening whatsoever. Um, the skeleton therefore will go for Fenrir. These uh, three assassins are down. We dazed one, uh, so zero damage incoming here. We knocked down an Anubis, zero damage incoming there as well. And there's the blade storm Get a hold and of a little bit of damage in return. Gianni will be fine, but just the amount of uh, damage avoidance is pretty nice. So now is where damage overload uh, should come in, as in we're expecting Show way more uh, damage uh, to happen to just take out enemies. Gianni um, gives himself and the others uh, the inspiration and with that the ability to get more AP. We're going to fill ourselves fully up uh, with uh, the uh, flow conjunction giving us yet another AP. So uh, as always we're pretty AP neutral and this is really where most of uh, the actual uh, damage now can uh, start to come in by using this into that. Line them up, knock them down. Kill, kill, heavy injury, right? 
Uh, we're then f uh, following up after uh, that nice little kill. We're following up uh, with uh, going further down to the assassins. A little bit too far. I should have uh, uh, should have gotten uh, further down, but that is fine. Uh, so in a case like that, um, we do have plenty of options. We could uh, use another provoke uh, once it is ready, or we're just going to use Fenrir in order uh, to uh, position himself as the best option. You can see just how much damage his shotgun is uh, dealing as a normal attack. Fenrir does have uh, the great ability to just heal himself up. Don't be afraid to stand in the open from time to time. Don't be reckless as well, but uh, Fenrir certainly can take a couple of hits because that would already have been more than 100 healing uh, back, so he very much can stand his own ground. Unfortunately, none of these guys have attacked Fenrir, so I can still not show you the kind of reset mechanic that we would see with Purnima. But um, we do have a few options available uh, with her nonetheless. We want to move away from the assassins. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to get our extra AP to make sure that we're, uh, that we're uh, being fine. We're going to take uh, this uh, guy out. Unfortunately missed it. Just barely, but that is fine. Gianni can finish the job. Gets AP back, just like he's always uh, getting them back. You're good, but not good enough. And you can see plenty, plenty of AP coming uh, to him now. What I would want to say though is I don't want to stand in the fire, although Gianni is taking only very limited damage. Instead what we're going to do is we're using Lightning Shift as a means to get in, reset Lightning Shift immediately, keep flow uh, going, and as you can see we're getting even more AP. Gianni is cleaning no one house. The same would be wi uh, happening with Purnima if we uh, would have had um, if we would have had markings but this is really how the damage overload team works um, it will deal so much damage that um, in almost no time the enemies are done positioning Gianni here so that if the mummy comes any closer to him um, he could have the attack of opportunity unfortunately uh, mummy decides to not do that but we do have reinforcements coming in, so perfect timing uh, to uh, set out for just a little bit Take more. This. We're using cooldown reduction, uh, cleansing of the uh, burning, which is going to be great for Purnima. And Fenrir, uh, same uh, topic as always, moves in and starts setting up uh, these guys. We could use another manhandle. Uh, potentially not the best option here. Uh, instead, we're going to set up uh, mm, the uh, mm, guy in the open. Can't have this lot running around wreaking havoc. Purnima kills, prepares uh, mm, the mummy, and we are definitely ready to take the mummy out. more flow which is important since we want uh, to up. since we want uh, to get more AP uh, and more crits and interestingly enough um, there was a bug because uh, the Herald should have um, allowed us to regain another AP unfortunately they didn't um, but fire damage isn't that problematic for us, as you can see. 50% of damage. Somebody, come on, Unfortunately, Just hang on. Uh, we d uh, with uh, the buck, uh, we weren't able to take uh, them out quick enough, but we can showcase just how good it uh, works regardless. So one of the things that we can do is heal up over here. Now finish the job. Oh, 
Okay. I'm okay, love. Very good. Can happen, even to the best of us. That takes out the mummy. You felt that one. Huh? Yep. Fair enough. Punima reloads, gains an AP and an auto crit. Going to use that. Into auto critting three uh, of them. Punima very healthy now. Jenny cleanses, gains extra AP and uh, provides AP for the rest of the team. So very, very solid. Gets in, gets more flow. Is almost maximized with his flow. And you can see we're now cleaning up. Another AP here from Furor. Armor Shred. Into on, put up a fight. You normal fight attack. Well. Impressed. More armor shred, more AP. It had to be done. Good. But I don't have to like it. Don't be deceived by the fact uh, that uh, we unfortunately, due to the bug, uh, got uh, hit down. Um, it was a combination of game not uh, working as it should be and uh, us not positioning uh, very well. We could have uh, dealt with the mummy in different uh, forms. We could have manhandled it, just uh, thrown it down. We did have uh, plenty of no knockdown potions, so there was really no reason um, to let it uh, run rampant. So there were playing mistakes as well. So. Uh, there are ways uh, with uh, this particular setup to uh, no even deal with a non-functioning situation. But if you recall what we've done, we were fighting against 11 enemies plus 3 reinforcements. Took us uh, two and a half rounds and we basically killed every single one of uh, them. Damage overload works if you are playing it right, uh, but it is a fragile con uh, concept, so it might be not the worst thing that in this guide you are seeing uh, that you can be in mortal danger if you are not positioning well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed uh, the damage overload composition, let me know what you think. Um, other than not getting knocked down, what would you think uh, could uh, be done better in this composition? Have you played a similar one? And uh, if uh, none of that applies, how about we're seeing each other in the next guide for yet another combination. Thank you for watching and have a good day.